So in this lecture, we're going to begin our discussion on hydrohalogenation reactions, and we're going to look specifically at the hydrohalogenation of alkenes. So let's suppose we have the following two reactants. Let's suppose we place an alkene into a beaker and we mix it with the following HCl molecule. What type of reaction can take place? Well, hydrohalogenation can take place, and let's see exactly what the mechanism of that reaction is. So once again, we begin with our two reactants. We have our pi bond on the alkene, and we have the following molecule. Now, the pi bond, the pair of electrons found in the pi bond, can act as a base, taking away this empty 1s orbital of the H atom, leaving these two electrons on the chlorine. So we produce the following carbocation intermediate in which we have a plus charge on this carbon so we have a tertiary uh, structure and our H atom went onto this carbon. So notice that this is a completely symmetrical alkene and that means it does not matter if our H went on this carbon or on the other carbon of the double bond. We would produce the same exact product. So this first step is known as the protonation step. It's the protonation or addition of the H atom onto our um, double bond to form the carbocation intermediate. So notice that this chlorine in a way was displaced. Now in the second step, this step is known as the addition reaction, addition of our chlorine. What happens is this lone pair of electrons on the chlorine acts as a nucleophile attacking or capturing the MT2P orbital of this carbon. Now notice this section of our molecule is planar and in fact it's rotating. This uh, 2P orbital is rotating up and down. So if these two sides were not the same, we would produce a cis and a trans or an E and a Z isomer molecules. But since this is completely symmetrical, we produce an identical molecule. This is our product. So once again, lone pair of electrons can either capture the top or the bottom lobe of our 2P orbital, of our empty 2P orbital, forming the following product. So let's say our two reactants are A, this carbocation intermediate is B, and this final product is C. So now to finish our reaction mechanism, let's label our energy diagram. So let's say the y-axis is our uh, change in Gibbs free energy on the standard state conditions and our x-axis is our reaction progress going from A to B to C. So when we go from A to B, our reaction is endothermic. Why? Well, because we create a carbocation intermediate. So we have the following reaction taking place from A to B, and our activation energy is given by this change and gives the energy of activation for the protonation reaction. And notice, this is the highest transition state on our entire diagram, and that will become important as we'll see in a second. So when B, so this is B, goes to C, our reaction is exothermic or exergonic. And what that basically means is that energy is released into the environment. And notice that our entire reaction is exergonic. Even though this might be endergonic, the entire reaction taking place is exergonic overall. So energy is being released into the environment. And notice that this transition state, the, the energy of this transition state is lower than the energy of this transition state. This means the first step, going from A to B, our prognation step, will be the step that determines our rate law. It will be the slow step, and we will have to use this step to determine our rate law. Remember, the reaction with the highest energy, the highest transition energy state, will determine our rate of our reaction. So, once again, in the first step, the alkene acts as a base taking the 1s orbital of the H atom. So the alkene, the pi bond, acts as a base, taking away this H atom. Now this is the slowest step because it has the highest transition states. 
Now, in the second step, notice the addition step, the chloride acts as a nucleophile using its pair of electrons to capture the empty 2p orbital of this carbon, forming our final product. In this case, we go from an alkene to an alkane. So once again, the first step is our protonation step, it's the rate determining step. The second step is the quick step, it's the addition of our chloride, in this case chloride, but really it could be any halogen. So if we replace this with a bromine, we could continue our reaction in the same exact way. Now, is this the only type of reaction that can actually take place when we mix these two products or these two reactants? And the answer is no. Other different reactions can compete with this reaction. Let's see which ones. So competing reactions. So let's look at case A. So in case A, our first step could be the same exact step. The H can be taken away by the pair of electrons in the pi bond forming our carbocation intermediate. But remember, this reaction goes in the forward as well as reverse direction. And notice, this is an, exo, uh, this is an endergonic reaction and that means our reactants will be more stable than our product. So that means our reaction can also go backwards in reverse forming our original two reactants. So, our chloride can actually take this H atom back, producing our two reactants. Now, a second type of competing reaction can exist for, this, for these two reactants. We can have the same exact first step, so our H atom can go onto this uh, carbon atom, forming the same exact carbocation intermediate as in this case, but now, the chloride, instead of taking away um, instead of actually attacking this carbocation, it can act as a base, taking away a different H atom. So, it can take away, for example, this H atom, forming a, a pi bond, a double bond between these two carbons, forming the following uh, molecule, the, far, the following alkene. Now, how do we know if this chloride atom will attack the 2p orbital or, or it will take away the 1s orbital? Well, remember definitions of nucleophiles and bases. A nucleophile competes for the 2p orbital while a base competes for the 1s orbital of the H atom. So, to determine which reaction actually takes place, which reaction will be the dominant reaction, we have to examine if this is a very good base or a very good nucleophile. If it's a good nucleophile, it will compete for the 2p orbital forming this product. If instead this is a good base, it will compete to form our alkene. So, this reactant that we spoke about earlier is a symmetrical alkene and that means this first step is the same if the H goes on this carbon or this carbon. Our product form is the same exact product. And in this case, we're not going to produce cis or trans isomers because if this carbon, if this slow pair of electrons attacks the top or bottom low, it does not matter what we produce, we produce the same exact product. But let's suppose we have a, an asymmetrical alkene. So let's suppose we have the following alkene. Now it matters where this H goes. We can either place the H, this lone pair of, or this pair of electrons in the pi bond can either take the H on this carbon or this carbon. So we can either produce this tertiary carbocation in which the H went on to this carbon or we can produce the following primary carbocation. So now because we have asymmetry, our first step matters and this second step will never take place. It will not take place or be very unlikely to take place because we produce a relatively unstable primary carbocation. So, to conclude, many factors can affect regiochemistry of our addition reaction. So, regiochemistry is simply the different types of intermediates and products that can be formed from the same two reactants. So, things to look out for whenever we decide which one of these reactions is taken is actually taking place. We have to examine carbocation stability. In other words, which ones of these carbocations is more stable? Which intermediate is more stable? 
two. We have to look at resonance, which we'll talk about in the next lecture. And three, we have to examine the product stability. So product stability simply means which ones of these products is the most stable product. The one that is most stable will shift equilibrium further to that side, producing more of that stable product under thermodynamic conditions, under conditions where, where we have a lot of energy.